Hey everybody, welcome to another video here on the channel. Today we're gonna go over some first impressions on four brand new books that I've recently read and want to discuss with you guys. So let's get started. First one on the list is The Guy She Was Interested Wasn't a Guy at All. This is published by Yen Press, and I have to give a shout out to them. They sent me this review copy here for you guys. I was not expecting this at all, so thank you so very much. That was really awesome, and I was actually going to pick this up, so it's all super convenient that I get to review it a little bit early. Super happy about that. This manga is a GL music series, and it stars two particular characters. We have Aya Osawa, who is head over heels over an employee at a local CD shop. This employee is called Mitsuki Koga, but there's an air of mystery about him. Koga has great style and impeccable music taste, but Aya does not know that this employee is actually her classmate, Mitsuki. Mitsuki is completely different at school. She's very timid to herself, doesn't really want to stand out, and her love for music, as well as working for her uncle in this music store, lets her true self flourish in the guise of this boy, if you will. Aya is madly crushing on the boy but doesn't really know and that lends itself to sort of the comedy aspects and of course the romance in the opening chapters and you really do get a feel for these characters thanks to the beautiful gorgeous expression from the writer and artist Sumiko Arai. The drawings here took me by surprise. They look phenomenal in my opinion, easily one of the best aspects of this book. The art is rich, vibrant, so expressive, and beautiful to look at. And yes, there is one particular gimmick which I have not discussed, and that is the usage of neon green in the background. Obviously, it's a stylistic choice. It certainly accentuates certain scenes. It heightens the mood. It can do all sorts of things to have colored backgrounds in sharp contrast with black and white character designs. It's a very bold choice, but I think it is is warming enough for the reader where you're right at home with these characters and you settle right in and want to know more about them. That was a very positive thing for me when reading this book. Now there's only three chapters in this first volume. The main pull here is of course the, the fact that Aya doesn't know and the relationship that she starts to form with this guy, quote unquote. But when you, the reader, find out about Mitsuki, you really start to root for her and there's this curiosity that forms. Obviously she wants Aya to know, but it's in her benefit for her to not know right away. And not only are you building a relationship in the CD shop, but also slowly but surely in the school as well. These are two very different characters that normally would not have met and become friends. They are uh, total opposites in the uh, popularity spectrum, if you will. One is very outgoing, super popular and pretty beautiful and all that stuff. And you have uh, Mitsuki who is more reserved, timid, maybe not the prettiest compared to what's popular or not in the school at the time. You know how things go when you're in high school back in the day. And this series is able to discuss all of that without being stereotypical when you think of high school romance or high school series in general. I do love the music element of this series. The fact that the two main characters are so into Western music makes this such a relatable manga to read. Even though I'm a fan of music, worldwide, you can't deny that when you have characters talking about Red Hot Chili Peppers, Deftones, Beck, etc., it makes for a more relatable experience. Now the main thing here, like I mentioned before, is obviously that uh, dynamic between the two characters, how Aya doesn't know, when will she know, that slight spoilers sort of gets resolved in this first volume, which is great. It's not something that's dragged out and can make the series evolve and progress the characters forward. If it was going to be stuck in that dilemma for chapters upon chapters, maybe I don't think it would have been as effective. But three chapters in, and keep in mind these are long chapters, you do get a lot of plot development and character progression, which I'm a huge fan of. So overall, I think this is great. Don't skip on it. 
the romantic aspects is actually pretty sweet and nice i love the art again beautiful character work so expressive great series overall fantastic start definitely will be looking out for more volumes whenever they come out cannot recommend it enough Alrighty, the next book that we're going to talk about is an unorthodox one in the method of which I'm delivering it. This is Momo Legendary Warrior from Alien Books. I don't have the books physically, but I was sent review copies, PDF copies, if you will, so that I can talk about it. I have only read the first two volumes, but I can give you my initial thoughts, my first impressions on the series. This piqued my interest when it was first solicited. This is is written by Yuji Kobayashi with art by Z1. I don't know if Z1 is one artist or a group. Uh, if you know, do let me know in the comment section. Uh, this is a three volume action fantasy series and it's very interesting. It is a sci-fi retelling of the legend of Momotaro. If you don't know what the legend of Momotaro is, it is a classic Japanese folktale about an elderly couple that discover a giant peach that's floating down the river. When they open it, there's a baby inside and they name him Momotaro, which means Peach Boy. Momotaro grows up, becomes super strong and brave, kind of like a Hercules type hero, if you will. And one day he sets off on a journey to defeat Oni demons, or think like giant ogre creatures. Along the way, he befriends some talking animals, uh, particularly a monkey, a pheasant, and a dog. And I could go on with the Momotaro story, but you sort of get the idea of what the the legend of Momotaro is. Now in this sci-fi retelling, we follow the character of Taro, an astronaut who crash lands on a harsh planet called Bizarre Earth. In here, he meets Momo, a fierce warrior, and the two don't necessarily get along at first. They have very different methods of doing things. Momo is more uh, stoic at times, uh, pragmatic. She's super powerful, whereas Taro is much more gentler, softer, uh, soft-spoken. But together, they form Momo Taro. They're are some hints about Momo's origin and how she was part of this space group that supposedly may have come from Earth and that is one of the running themes throughout this story. Now the two of them get attacked by Oni and they decide to team up and fight these creatures and uh, defeat the, the bad guys, if you will, free this land of the Oni rule. They are very barbaric, authoritarian. They want to kill and eat everybody. And the other character species live in fear of the Oni. So of course, we're going to see some missions where they're going to build up a team and we're going to see the bird person, which we do in this first volume. And of course, in volume two, we're going to meet the dog character as well as the monkey. The art on this is really good. The vistas and panoramas are fantastic for this planet, as well as the creature designs. The Oni look super scary and frightful. Momo looks great it's like a super badass xena type warrior and the animals are well they're humanoid i don't necessarily like this version of these animals they kind of freak me out to be honest but i do like when you take classic stories and you can reinvent them in new ways like this the whole sci-fi twist i think is pretty cool again it's only three volumes uh, not a huge commitment on the shelf and the presentation from what i've seen from other youtubers and friends of mine is actually really cool i like the fact that the physical volumes have a dust cover which mirrors the original uh, tankoban releases in japan there was a solicit that mentioned colored pages but i don't know when when exactly these will be placed probably in volume three at the finale as a bonus feature or a special feature so we'll have to see but overall again uh bomo legendary warrior a pretty fun series if you like sci-fi if you like folk tales action adventure stories with uh, sort of an epic sword and sandal scope maybe consider picking it up 
The next book that we're going to talk about is also a Yen Press release. This was not a review copy, I actually bought this one. This is Hachioji's Specialty Tengu's Love. This is actually one of my most anticipated reads of the year. I've been so eager to check this out. This is a shoujo manga that mixes uh, yokai with romance in a pretty effective, sweet way that I was not expecting to absolutely adore. We basically follow Kotaro, who is this lonely young adult and on a fateful day he reunites at Mount Takao with a Tengu girl he used to know. Now at first he can't remember but the character of Hime saved his life many years ago when they were kids and Kotaru made a promise to her. He can't remember it but for the sake of both individuals Hime warned him to not meet for a third time which of course is what happens at the start of the manga and it turns out that if they were to meet a third time it would be a proposal and and they would be engaged, set to marry. Tengu are a legendary yokai. They are traditionally depicted with human, monkey, or avian characteristics. They can be forces of good, mischief, or evil. So with the reunion out of the way, Hime is set to marry, but Kotaru, he's opposed to the idea of marriage and befriending and getting to know Hime again as an adult tells her to maybe experience life first and uh, you know all the the sights and sounds out there in Japan before committing to this rule that she has to marry. Hime completely misunderstands and thinks okay so let's go out into the human world and practice being a potential husband and wife so she uses her powers and wings to take him out of the mountain out of the Tengu village and they're gonna live in his household as a potential couple which which of course brings all the hijinks of a good romantic comedy. This is a very sweet series. I love the interaction between the two characters. Even when Kotaro is being hard-headed and annoying, he's still a sweet kid with good intentions. Hime is super naive because she's not used to regular human customs, uh, knowing about all the different foods and technology and all that stuff. Now that she's in this new scenario where she's going to have a completely brand new life, it's pretty hard warming, endearing, and wholesome to have this beautiful relationship start to form. At first, Kotaro is completely opposed, but as you read on with the chapters, he starts to like the idea of finally having uh, your other half, finally having somebody around with you, living with somebody, a partner, and all the joys and, and sadness and tribulations that come with. Now, there are a couple of hints of his past, which might not be the best and that of course has made him a little resentful a little a uh, little bit of an outcast but sharing this supernatural experience, if you will, with Hime is obviously going to uh, open him up and, and better him as a person. This manga is written and drawn by Yoshi Sugitsuki. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And the art is fantastic. I think personally, for my taste, this is one of the best looking manga released in 2024. For us, anyways. I love the characters. I love how they look. Uh, there's this one scene at the beginning where you see Hime and she has her Tengu mask, which she's not a fan of, but it's so iconic that you have to draw that in there. And it just looks fantastic. I love that. That's probably one of my favorite uh, panels from the manga. And just seeing her joy and uh, happiness made me happy. Happy. When I was reading this, I was a little bit bummed out by, you know, real world stuff that I'm not going to get into in this video. But reading this book sort of uh, filled me with joy. I felt that love, compassion and uh, enthusiasm from these characters. And in a weird uh, sequence of events, I could I could sort of just feel that energy in me. And it made my reading time more pleasant and uh, just happier overall. And that just goes to show you the power of sequential art and literature. This was a fantastic read and I can't wait for volume two. It's a thick book, but it reads super fast. Once you start, you can't put the book down. It's super funny and wholesome. If you like a good mashup of the fantastical, the whimsical with shoujo and romantic comedies and stuff like that, seriously, you'll be right home with Tengu's love. I think this is a phenomenal read.
Last but not least, the final book that we're going to talk about is another of my most anticipated reads of the year, Nos and Zakuro. This is by Rariatu. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I am a huge fan of the creator. I follow him on Twitter. Nos and Zakuro is a pretty funny series. To me, it read more like a web comic. Uh, and by that, I don't mean like Bonwa or anything, just like a web comic that you would read on, on your browser. But it's essentially on this uh, spooky land called Shadowsville. And in this world that sort of exists on limbo, in between this world and the next, there are a pair of vampires. We follow Nos who is named after the Nosferatu type of vampire, and her adopted daughter, Zakuro. Now, Zakuro, they don't say it right away, but it is implied that she's sort of like a daywalker, where the sunlight doesn't affect her. She's still super strong and has the abilities of a vampire. So I assumed, I just started calling her a daywalker, similar to uh, Blade from Marvel. And the cool thing about this series, it's much more comedy-based. It's very wholesome. I would say this is great for all families. If you you want a good spooktober fun read this is it right here zakuro and nos do not drink human blood it's gross and they would prefer to take juice boxes from other species now in this world human blood is available but it's a much more rare premium item and not everybody's a fan of which you know it's a different twist on the whole vampire genre most of the stories, however, is just Nos and Sakuro living their lives and the challenges and struggles that come with a young woman adopting this girl and now becoming a mother. She is a very protective of Sakuro and Sakuro is just growing up, learning about her strengths and weaknesses and abilities while befriending other people and being a little bit naive about things. There are a couple chapters where she gets into trouble, but she's able to figure things out. Uh, Nos worries too much and it leads into some comedic moments. The art is very cartoonish, which is a huge plus. The opening chapters in color, which adds a vibrancy and great world building in a simple but effective manner. By having the day-to-day -day activities, you get a sense for this town, you get a sense for the characters, and just the wholesomeness that's around. Yes, there are tricksters and pranksters and evildoers, but it's not as threatening because, again, you're following these two cute characters. So yeah, you'll feel right at home in Shadowsville. I hope we get a volume two someday. I don't think it's going to come out anytime soon, but this first one, super happy I picked it up. And I love the single large trim edition here. It looks great on hand. All right, there we go. Four brand new first impressions for you guys. I really enjoyed all four books. They all bring something unique to the table. Again, I want to give a shout out to the folks at Yen Press as well as Alien Books for providing review copies. The guy she was interested in wasn't a guy at all. And for Alien Books, uh, Momo Legendary Warrior. That is so cool. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of the channel. I truly, truly do appreciate it. That's going to be it for now. Stay safe, everybody. God bless. I will catch all of you on our next video.